Welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review, this Asvine P80 Piston Filler Skeleton Fountain Pen. The fountain pen world seems to have exploded recently with these skeleton type pens. The first one I ever reviewed was a Levant Skeleton. It was a very nice pen and you can see that review by clicking right up here. Then Asvine sent me their very first pen, the Asvine V169 Vac Filler Skeleton. But they have since come out with quite a few models, one of which made the top of my best pens of 2023 list, which you can see by clicking up there too. With this new model P80, Asvine has returned to their very first pen, the V169 Vac Filler, but made two significant changes. One, it isn't a Vac Filler, but a piston filler. And two, it's a cigar-shaped pen rather than the flat top design. The clip and the section shape are also a bit different, but everything else is identical. The doorstop weight, the chromed brass outer skeleton, the slippery metal section, the lack of posting, and the significant price tag. But let's take a look right now. Well, they're coming by the truckload now, or boatload. Another package from China. And unlike the last one, I know what this one is. Um, I had some special communications with Sally at Easy Buy on Etsy, the Asvine P50, which hadn't been released when I asked her for it. And then she mentioned that there was another one as well, the Asvine P80, which isn't on the market even yet. Let's open this package. Okay, so there's two Asvine pens. And this will be the P80. Again, the wrench. And it's branded Asvine. The instruction manual. And here, this is very, very similar. Let me get it out. Excuse me while I whip this out. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> So this is very, very similar to the Asvine V169. This was the first Asvine I've ever tried, and they sent it to me. This is a couple of years ago now. This is a vacuum filler, and this is the piston filler. So if you like that skeleton style, you'll love this new P80. Seem to be a lot of pens with this skeleton style on them these days. So we'll take a look at the... Asvine P80. I'll show the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons and measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. As I mentioned in the introduction, after making several very successful models, Asvine has returned to their first model, the V169 Vac Filler, and turned it into a piston filler, reshaped it into a cigar shape, and reshape the section and the clip. They've also made the new model P80 available in four colorways with three nib options. I received a pre-release version of the P80 from Sally at Easy Buy, and I'm noticing that the pattern on the skeleton is now different. Mine is the same pattern as the V169, but what is being sold on AliExpress and Amazon is slightly different. I'm also noticing that some of the resellers are making Bach nibs as an option for extra money. This is a heavy chrome over brass outer and turned acrylic inner piston filler that weighs the same as its vac filling sibling at 53 grams. From the top, we see the cigar shaped finial that holds the redesigned Asvine clip in place. I'm glad they changed the clip because this one on the Asvine V169 Vac Filler was a source of OCD frustration for me. Tap that pile of receipts against a flat surface so they're not sticking out haphazardly. You know what? Forget about the money. Everybody grab a broom. We are straightening this place up. I still haven't been able to make it sit straight. And the clip is the same as the one that's on the Asvine P50 piston filler. And it's very simple and very usable. The cap tapers up to a raised cap band that has Asvine on the front and the model number P80 on the back. 
The cap band curves down to the barrel, so there's no step here. And the barrel tapers all the way down to the bottom cigar-shaped piston knob. The inner cap and barrel sleeves are transparent, turned acrylic, in the same blue as on the V169. And they made the acrylic and three other transparent colors, red, gray, and clear. The cap unscrews with one and a quarter turn to reveal the tapering chrome brass section, which has a flare towards the number six size steel asvine medium nib and black plastic feed. The section is slick and those cap threads are very smooth. Let's look closer at this nib. It is the same nib feed and nib unit as the P50 and the nib units unscrew and are interchangeable. It has the border scroll work, a script M in a circle, which stands for medium, and as vine. The section does not unscrew. And the inside of the cap shows a ledge milled into the inner acrylic that meets up with the section to seal the nib from evaporation. The cap does go on the back of the pen, but not very deeply and not very securely. And it also posts right on top of that piston knot. So I'd classify this pen as not postable. Unposted, the pen is a good length and balance, but still weighs 33 grams. The P80 retails for $38 US with an Asvine nib and about $47 US with a Bach nib. Make sure you ask your retailer uh, to include the Asvine piston wrench with your pen. It makes cleaning this pen so much easier if you can get the piston out. But also make sure you remove the piston correctly, like this. Hello, children. Hello. How to open a piston. Hello, children. Hello. Hello. Well, last week we showed you how to be a gynecologist. And this week on how to do it, we're going to learn how to play the flute, how to split the atom, how to construct box girder bridges, Super. and how to irrigate the Sahara and make vast new areas cultivatable. How to play the flute. Well, you blow in one end and move your fingers up and down the outside. Great, Alan. No, I'm just teasing. How to open the piston on the Asvine P80. Well, make sure that you get your retailer to include the Asvine wrench, because without it, it's difficult. And there are a couple of things to know when doing this. Put the wrench on the piston, and then close the piston down on top of the wrench lightly, so that it doesn't fall off. Then, when you remove this piston, just leave that wrench attached to it. So you can take the piston out, clean the pen, put some silicone grease on the piston, and put the piston back in without having to remove that wrench. And there's a reason for that. So once the wrench is on there, it's a righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. So reverse thread. And then you can just pull it out. There we go. And you can put some silicone grease on there but do not unscrew this any more than this now you can take all these parts apart but I recommend against it because it'll take you hours to get that piston back in the right place so that it's not reducing your ink capacity at this point you can also remove this nib by unscrewing the assembly like that and then you've got a clear tube and you can run water through that clear tube and then i always take a cotton swab and dry it out completely like that put a little silicone grease or i like silicone oil this is silicone oil that you can get from your exercise supply places as well it's silicone oil for lubricating the gears on a, a treadmill so just a little dab will do you here the difference between silicone oil and silicone grease is viscosity the silicone oil is less viscous so more watery than the grease so it's good for lubrication but silicone grease here's some silicone grease you can see the difference in consistency. This is not liquid. This is more like a paste. This is more like a liquid. So now that I've got that piston lubricated, I can put it in the barrel, run it up and down a few times, just get that grease moving around, sorry, oil moving around, and then reverse thread, lefty tighty, just snug, just snug. That's all you need. And then open that piston, wrench falls off, and then you close it back down again. And that way, you maintain that piston distance. 
so that your ink capacity is correct. It should be, your ink capacity should be around 1.5 milliliters on this model. And we put our nib unit back in, again just hand tight, and then we're ready to fill it. And today I'm going to fill it with Dimene Jack Frost, it comes in this really cool bottle. And it's a shimmering ink, so I'm going to shake it up a bit, get all that particulate moving around. And we open the piston knob to move that piston all the way down. Dip the pen in the ink until the feed is completely submerged. And we move the piston back. That will get you a partial fill of ink. Now just put a tissue, you're going to do that anyway, tissue on the top and you should be able to see the bubble through the barrel. I'm going to push that bubble out by moving the piston up until I see ink bubbling right there at the base of the feed. That's just a bubble. I'm going to move slowly. It's starting to flood that tissue. Put it back in the ink and tighten the piston down again. And we have a full fill. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Asvine P80 Skeleton Piston Filler with an Asvine P50 Piston Filler Acrylic, an Asvine V169 Vac Filler, a Hongdian A6 Skeleton Piston Filler, and an Asvine P36 Piston Filler in Titanium. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted, thems that post. And the only one that posts successfully is the P50 acrylic. Now let's look at them unposted. There we go. There they are unposted. And you'll see the review of the Hongdian A6 piston filler skeleton real soon now. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, 90 GSM paper, and this is the Asvine P80 skeleton. And it has a number six size steel medium nib. Let's check the wetness. Well, this is nicely wet and very, very smooth. This is right out of the box. I'm becoming more and more impressed uh, with the Asvine nibs of late. It's a nice, thick, smooth, juicy nib. And the ink is Dimene Jack Frost. This is a particularly festive ink for this time of year. Well, for any time of the year. Jack Frost is very, very nice. It has a number of things happening here. It shades from deep blue purple to teal, sheens a bright pink, and shimmers blue and silver. So it's a bright, beautiful, shading, sheening, and shimmering ink. Say that seven times fast. Let me come with you, Pontius. I may be of some assistance if there is a sudden crisis. And as to line variation, surprisingly, it actually does press out a little bit of thickness, even though it's thick to begin with. And the line this nib makes is slightly thicker on the verticals than the horizontals, so it's slightly architect-like, which makes it a Western fine to medium or a Japanese fine medium to medium broad, because the horizontal line is 0 0.4 millimeters and the vertical line is a 0 0.6 millimeters on my Richard Bender line width chart which you can find linked in the description below. And for our quote.
and for some reverse writing it's slightly scratchy but it's much thinner and drier so it actually works and for some quick writing I don't have many issues with this every so often if you really push this nib it will railroad but it's not designed to be like that it's not designed to be a flex nib so under normal writing conditions that feed keeps up very nicely so what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen well this is a nice update to the original Asvine V169 vacuum filler the piston mechanism is right out of the P50 the P36 the P20 same equipment and works very very well the nib is awesome writing smooth and wet with a touch of bounce the feed doesn't keep up too well when you're pressing it as you can see there's some railroading right here and it skips a couple of times when I'm pushing it fast but that might have more to do with all of the particulate that I put in this pen with the diamine jack frost lots of shimmer in that but this medium nib is so juicy that it actually shows off a shimmering ink like Jack Frost for my taste the P50 and the P20 are better pens because they're lighter in the hand and I think they're more attractive at least the P20 with its galaxy acrylic aesthetics are a very subjective thing I know and I know that many of you like the look of these heavy skeleton pens and people must like them because Montblanc sold some that looked just like this for thousands of dollars each I don't see it myself but that's just me I do applaud Asvine for continuing to make solidly built fountain pens with excellent steel nibs right out of the box I do wonder however if we might see another vac filler model from Asvine they currently have five models of piston fillers but only two versions of vac fillers with the Asvine V126 and the Asvine V169 are we likely to see a vac filler model of the P50 or the P20 anytime soon inquiring minds would like to know and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote I made this